Hi guys, this is Rich from Rich TV Live, and I'm reading this article from Seeking Alpha, and I find it very interesting, and I wanted to get into it. It says, weekly cannabis report, pot prices will start falling in Canada. So they are predicting that the prices of cannabis will start falling in Canada, which is a good thing because right now I don't see how these LPs can compete with the private sector. It's something I've been talking about for a long time. Let's get into it. The cannabis sector drifted lower last week with major ETFs down 1-2%. to Canopy and Acreage completed their transaction, including the payout of US $30 million in cash to Acreage shareholders. Which means that deal is going to happen, people. Nationwide sales jumped in Canada in April, which is positive. But question remains on whether prices will start falling as supply surges. This is a supply and demand issue. The reality is, as more and more companies keep getting licensed and keep coming on board, there's going to be more competition, which is going to force the prices down so people can compete, and that'll be good for customers. This is the weekly cannabis report on Seeking Alpha. So the trading summary, cannabis stocks declined slightly last week. The Horizons Marijuana Life Sciences Index ETF, HMLSF in America, HMMJ in Canada declined 1.7%, and the ETF MG Alternative Harvest ETF otherwise known as MJ, as a symbol, lost 0.9%, just under 1%. Meanwhile, the Horizons U.S. Marijuana Index ETF declined 1.3% after suffering heavy losses since its launch in April. Canadian large cap. Canopy CGC was flat after completing its transaction to acquire acreage ACRGF in America upon the U.S. legalization. So the deal will only be complete once U.S. legalizes, and considering they're completing this deal, they must know that U.S. legalization is happening. Otherwise, why would they be paying out $300 million to shareholders? Aurora ACB gained 7% as it signed a definitive agreement to acquire Hempco HMPPF in America, HEMP in Canada. Tilray, T-L-R-Y, gave back some of its 29% gains in the prior week. We discussed Afria, APHA, last week and why we think its valuation is attractive. I also believe that Afria has huge upside from here. Canadian mid-cap Hexo, H-E-X-O, declined 6% after the research analyst at Oppenheimer downgraded the stock. Organigram OGI and Cantrust, CTST, both declined slightly without news, and I like them both. Today, Organigram did climb in America, even though we're in a Canadian holiday today, we saw a lot of American cannabis stocks do relatively well today. Canadian small cap Vivo and VVCIF has finally done a dead cap bounce after just going down what it seems like forever. Bounced back 20% after losing 19% in the prior week. Medifarm, M-E-D-I-F, and Labs in Canada rose 7% after securing 9,000 kgs of cannabis for white label production. I do own shares in Labs, and I love them. Several small cap stocks jumped double digits, including Alifia, A-L-E-A-F, M-D, I-V-I-T-F, and Zenibis, one of my favorites, Z-B-I-S-F, which also jumped today 13%, and Oxley, Finally, Oxley coming back from the dead, CBWTF. We are starting to see some of these stocks that have been getting crushed finally come back. So you can see here a list of stocks. You can see their one week, one month, three month, and 2019 numbers. Village Farms is up the most, 239%, followed by Medifarm at 198%, and Valens Grow Works at 175%. The stocks down the most so far in 2019 are Zenibis, still down 69%, Invictus MD, still down 42%, and Tilray, still down 34%. Now, if we scroll down, U.S. large caps. U.S. MSOs were mixed last week. Curaleaf, C-U-R-L-F, dropped 6%. As it acquired two more dispensaries in Arizona, love Cure Leaf. That is just a buying opportunity. Cresco Labs CRLBF dropped 8% after a 22% rebound in the prior week. Medman MMNFF continued its recent momentum and rose another 10% coming back from the dead, which we said it would. Acreage dropped 14% after the ex-dividend date passed for its shareholders to receive 
$2.63 per share in cash from Canopy, which is a $300 million deal in cash and a bunch of stock. Charlotte's Web CWBHF was flat after the big jump last week. They were green today in America. U.S. Small Cap and International Liberty Health LHSIF rose 10%, likely on the back of the recent opening of its 16th location in Florida. Cushco KSHB rose 15% after announcing a new distribution center in Michigan. I love Cushco at these, these prices. Green Growth GGBXF dropped 5% despite announcing an expanded deal to sell its CBD products at 161 ANF stores. Now, if we take a look at some of the biggest movers in 2019, even though they've been getting crushed recently, BAM is still up 143% in 2019. IIPR up an incredible 172% and priced at $123. Just insane growth for IIPR. And what else here? We've got Planet 13 is up 74% in 2019. Industry news, Canopy Growth announced that they have received an outdoor growing license and completed the initial planting at 160 acres site. Canopy Growth acquired Keyleaf, a Canadian extraction focused company with a footprint in Canada and the US. Aurora Cannabis signed a definitive agreement for its previously announced acquisition of Hempco. Acreage and Canopy successfully implemented their announced transaction and acreage shareholders receive $2.63 per share in cash. Supreme Cannabis, SPRWF, launched a new UK-based subsidiary to focus on European CBD and wellness opportunities. Love Supreme Cannabis. Cureleaf acquired its 7th and 8th stores in Arizona for $25.5 million. Love Cureleaf. Harvest Health, HRVSF, shareholders approved its announced acquisition of Verano, which is being delayed due to regulatory review. Love Harvest Health. They put out news saying that they are going to generate around 900 million in sales in 2020, which is just mind boggling. It would pretty much put them in number one in the world. Keep your eye on Harvest Health. Tilray completed an import of its cannabis oral products into the UK. Market using products manufactured in Canada. Medifarm secured another 9,000 kgs of dried cannabis, which will further expand its white label production capabilities. Green Growth Brands expanded its partnership with ANF to 161 stores from the initial trial in 10 locations. Cushco plans to open up a new distribution center in Michigan to support its growing customer base in Illinois and Michigan. Maine's governor, Janet Mills, signed a bill that will legalize the recreational cannabis market, which is estimated to be $100 million by 2020. Now, looking ahead, Statistics of Canada announced April cannabis sales data, and it showed notable growth from prior months. As the supply situation improves across the country and more retail stores are opened, we think the Canadian legal market will continue to see growth. However, despite the growth in overall sales, we think the risk of falling prices will become more apparent as supplies continue to come online. As we discussed before, Canada's demand for recreational cannabis is likely around 600,000 kgs per year, while the top 20 licensed producers are on track to produce over 2.5 million kgs per year. Something's got to give, folks. Canadian cannabis legal retail sales, you can see in October 2018, was 415 in November 18 was 53.7, in December was 57.3, in January was 54.9, in February was 51.7, in March was 60.5, and in April was 74.7 million. We think the Canadian market will face a wave of Canadian cannabis oversupply, which will force the price to drop, similar to what happened in several U.S. states like Colorado that legalized recreational cannabis. For example, government data showed that recreational cannabis prices have dropped significantly across Colorado, Oregon, and Washington after their legalization. You can see here the drop in prices. I mean, that's significant. For investors, the key would be to focus on owning diversified producers that will be able to benefit from higher margin product forms such as vape pens, edibles, and beverages. 
Let's really focus on that, people. LPs that lack the processing capabilities will face falling prices for their dried cannabis production before commoditization further pressures their margin. Successful enterprises will navigate through the changing landscape by moving into more profitable segments of the market while leaving unsophisticated growers behind. We will continue to monitor realized prices reported by LPs and identify when pricing deflation begins. We think large caps with established extraction capabilities will be able to capture more of the high margin product segments. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. You can see here some of the related stocks. And this is the news from the cannabis sector. So we've had three months in a row of losses in the cannabis sector. This is a very cyclical industry. We've seen this sector go up and down. We've seen it go typically down for three months and then up for three months. We had three good months, January, February, March. Now we've had three bad months, April, May, June. Is this resurrection near? Are we going to see three months now of gains in July, August, September? I believe we will. Stay tuned. This is your boy Rich from Rich to be Live. If you're not winning, you're most likely not watching. We bring the winners, we bring in the news, and we bring it to you first. This is from Seeking Alpha. Great article breaking down what is going on in the sector. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button. Go to www.richtvlive.com to get all the updated news. Everything you need to know about the cannabis sector, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're able to look into stocks, do your due diligence, do your research, get everything you need to know about the entire sector at www.richtvlive.com. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon.